Hey everyone, I figured I'd do some Databricks stuff here for you and I, in this video I want to show what's probably one of my favorite things that Databricks offers and that is the Databricks utilities here. And these utilities allow us to work with the, the Databricks file system, you can do notebook workflows, uh, notebook widgets, uh, you can read secrets, and you can handle libraries within uh, each of these notebooks. And I'm going to kind of pretty quickly go through each one of these and all the things that they can do. So the first one here, I'm going to go through uh, just some of the, the file system items that you can do. Uh, dbutils.fs and on, on each of these uh, dbutils items you can do a help method on it. For each of the fs of the file system utilities, it just gives you kind of documentation of all the items that you can do. So the first one I want to show is um, how you can make a new new directory, and all these items are pretty much are going to be against the Databricks file system, and so do the mkdir just like you would in the command line, and most of these commands are similar to uh, command line commands. Uh, so I can just make a new dir like that. Actually, it's mk dirs is what it is. And it comes back true, which indicates that it created it. And I can use another uh, utility called ls, which is lists out all the items in the in the file system. And I can uh, look at the new dir and it's going to be empty there. But if I create a new new one in there and then run this again then it'll show me that new directory. And by the way you can utilize this Databricks display function to give you a nicer view of the results here instead of having to parse through all that all that text. Another one is going to be the put method, and what that does is, uh, and what that does is going to add a file to the directory uh, that you tell it to. So within that new new directory. I can say I want a new file, a new.txt, and I can pass in another parameter to it saying what what text I want it to actually put into that file. So I do demo text within it. You say wrote nine bytes and it was true, which I created it, and then I can use that ls command as well. And we see we get that, that new directory we created earlier, but we also get this, this new.txt file that we created. And so what if we wanted to kind of look at the contents of that new.txt file that we created? What we can do is use the head method, head method, and then pass in the path of the file, and then there we go. It gives us gives us the, the text of the file there, and we can move files from one directory to another with the mv command. So we have that new dir that txt. I'm going to bring it up to is it new dir? What was it? Slash new. Here we go. I used to display for this. Give utils, and we'll look at the new. And then there's there's the file there. And if you want to copy that file back, use the cp command. It's new. Um, we get txt, and then copy it back to just new during 
it. So if we run this again, that's still in there. But this is also back in the new directory that we created. And lastly, on the file system utilities here, uh, we can remove files with the rm command here. So it's in this place here. So we'll just do new. So that's true. So if we come back and run this again, we'll just get that directory that we had before and the file's gone. The next thing I want to show, uh, let's move this down. The next one I want to show are those, uh, are the widgets. And uh, let's see, notebook widgets. And these are pretty cool. Uh, so they allow us to kind of create HTML controls within the notebook here and what that's useful for is if you want to parameterize certain uh, parts of the notebook where instead of just updating the cell uh, of the item itself you can just update the widget and whatever cell utilizes the values of the widget it'll get it the, the new value each time so I do db utils the widgets and let's say I want to create a text and I'll call it kind of API key. Uh, the next parameter is kind of a, the, the default value, which I'll leave as empty string, and I'll give it a label of API key. And so that creates this widget up here. And we give it API key there. And we can read that value here if you use the, the get method on the widgets and we'll give it the same kind of the, the name that we get here from that first parameter and it returns us back to what we get here so if we update this to new key and rerun it there it does that in fact we didn't even didn't even need to rerun it So it updates all itself. And there are different uh, widget types that you can do. So you got combo box, drop downs, and multi selects as well. And if we want to remove the widgets, we can even uh, remove a specific name here. Uh, just pass in the name that we did the, similar to when we got it or we just call it the remove all method and that just removes it from up at the top so no, another thing for the notebooks is the um, notebook workflows and this is a pretty powerful uh, uh, utility here because that allows us to have multiple notebooks and we can run these uh, one after another and kind of in pretty much a workflow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new notebook call it workflow and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do um, I'll just do print hello notebook workflow there we go and then I go back to my previous notebook here and I can do notebook give it the name of the notebook that we just created and run it I have to give it a time of seconds which is required I'll just say five So it's running that notebook right now. And what it does is it creates uh, a new job within 
uh, Databricks here. There we go, that ran, we can go to that job. And we saw that it ran the, our print statement and it printed it out here. So that can be done with some pretty sophisticated uh, extract transform load uh, workflows or any other kind of workflows that you need. I want to go over is the the library utilities here and I think the, the biggest thing that you'll probably use this for is to install a Python package from the Python package index. So let's see. And we'll import uh, SimPy, which is a way to do algebraic computations within Python. And before we do that, let's just let me show that it's not already uh, loaded here. So there's no module and we install it. So return true so it installs successfully. Now if we try to import it, it works correctly. And the last one I want to show are the secrets. So, so now these uh, these utilities within the notebook won't allow you to uh, add a secret to it. You can only do that with a command line interface, but it is a great way to utilize the secrets that you have uh, already loaded into Databricks. And so the way they handle it is they need to add a secrets to what they call a scope. And a scope is just a way to organize your secrets. For instance, uh, I have a scope named Azure, so that's where I can put all my Azure API keys and, and condition strings and all that. And we can, what you can do is that you can list uh, the different keys which you have loaded within the scopes. So I have uh, I have two of them here, an API key and secret key. And so if I want to get the item from that API key here, so I can give it the Azure or, or use the, the get method on it, give it the, the scope, which is Azure, and give it the key, which is the API key. And then right here, it doesn't actually show you what the, the value is. It's redacted when it uh, outputs it here to the, uh, on, the, on the notebook. Uh, but you can still use it to pass in keys wherever you need to. All right, so that was just a, a bit of a brief overview of some of the Databricks utilities. And, you know, I find these, they can be quite helpful, quite helpful especially when you build out some pretty complicated workflows and um, some extract transform load uh, projects as well. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.